right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Thank you, Erica. Welcome, everybody, to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm your host, Josh Taylor. Good to talk to you again on a Friday and plenty to discuss. We got baseball with the Pirates having their home opener today against Baltimore. They lose that 5-2. to two. We've got the Penguins. They've won three games in their last four days, all three of them on the road. They're back home tomorrow facing Tampa, trying to stay in within arm's length of a playoff spot. They're two points out entering today. That could be something that changes tomorrow with the win against Tampa. We'll discuss that. Plus, a lot of changes happening with college basketball. Could there be another big name heading to Pittsburgh next season to play? We'll talk about those things in more and more. And to help me discuss those things, my guest making her debut on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. She's live in the 93.7 The Fan Newsroom, but she's from 1020 AM. Radio KDKA, Susie Cool joins me. Susie, good to have you. And uh, the last time we saw each other was a few months ago. We were working the uh, city championship basketball, uh, city league uh, basketball championships together. But here we are again. We're talking some baseball. Let's start with the Pirates, first of all. But, but thanks for, for coming aboard tonight. Hey, Josh, thanks so much for having me. And whenever I was told that you were going to be my co-host tonight, I was like, let's get to it. I loved working with Josh during the City League Championships. <laughs> Had a fun time, as always. Got to give a shout out to the JRM guys and Matt and, and Jake and the crew. But uh, good times, of course. Let's get into some baseball here. Pirates had their home opener. They lose to Baltimore 5-2. to two. Couple good things to pull from. O'Neill Cruz hits a home run. Jared Triolo hits his first of the season solo shot. But Jared Jones, I felt, was the story today. He got the ball on the mound. He went six innings, gave up two solo home runs, but struck out seven batters, got out of a big jam in the fourth inning. For those of you who saw the highlights that we showed just a few moments ago, I thought he had a strong, another strong performance, I should say, to piggyback off the one he had earlier in the season. But your thoughts on Jared Jones and what we saw today? Josh, you mentioned the two home runs that Jared Jones gave up on the mound. However, you still need run production from your team in order to get a win. You're never going to win a game mm. if a run doesn't cross the plate, right? So Jared Jones going six innings gets another seven strikeouts. I think that strikeout total is something that we need to take note of because if you look at his numbers from the minors, he was averaging 10.4 strikeouts through nine innings through three seasons mm. in the minors from 21 to 23, right? He already has 17 on the year through two starts and that's because he's flirting with those three the three digits right he's throwing some heat on his four seam fastball and then also whenever he throws that nasty slider into the rotation he's getting these hit at these hitters at the major league level yeah he was throwing a slider at 90 and 91 in the first inning probably probably ticked up a little bit a little bit of adrenaline but that's his kind of mentality he has that attack mindset and it shows when he's on the mound and it looks like nothing shakes this kid either. I mean, he gets his first start. He goes five and two thirds innings. He strikes out 10 batters. And then he comes here today, has never played in front of a crowd at PNC Park, a sold out crowd, a blackout crowd for the home opener. It's freezing cold. It's snowing at points. And he's just out there calm, cool, and collected. Like he's done it all the time. And again, this is just one of those young prospects, young players that Buccos fans better get used to because he's in that starting rotation right now and he's showing why he deserves to be there and if there's anything else you look at I was talking about drawing positives earlier guess what folks he's not the only one there's help on the way we will take a break mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that when we come back plus we're taking your phone calls 412-575-2600 and we're taking your tweets as well at Josh Taylor HD we'll do it all stick around Welcome back. Time for our GMC Sierra Tweet of the Night. Comes from MLB Pipeline. Paul Skeens through two AAA starts, six innings, two, two base runners by Walker hit, just one walk, one hit, and 11 strikeouts. And he lit up the radar gun again. Another bunch of triple-digit fastballs that he threw tonight for Indianapolis. And, of course, the Indianapolis Indians get a win. But Paul Skeens so far through two starts in AAA, as good as advertised, hasn't allowed a run, struck out six, uh, struck out 11 batters, and only allowed one hit and one walk. It also helps when you're talking about baseball. When you have a guest who has actually announced some pro baseball. Susie, let's talk about Paul Skeens and what we've seen so far through two starts. We talked about Jarrett Jones earlier in the show and what he's been able to do in two starts in Major League Baseball, but Paul Skeens gets to start the season in AAA, has been pretty strong so far. It's 
you hate to say it's something that you expect, but when you knew what Paul Skeens had coming into the draft, when the, when the Pirates selected him, then coming into this season, what he did in spring training, your, your thoughts on what you've seen from him so far, and are you surprised at this point? Are, are you surprised, Josh? No. That's the real question. I don't think anybody is surprised by with by what Paul Skeens is producing in Indianapolis right now. Six innings, a number of strikeouts, and tonight alone he hit triple digits, 13 of his 44 pitches that he tossed on the bump. This doesn't surprise me coming from Paul Skeens. I talked with Jeff Hathorne about him earlier this week, and I said, I really hope that the Pirates don't rush him up to the Pirates roster, right? I always say, take a little bit of a break whenever you're looking at your top prospects make sure they are really ready to make that major league jump and Jeff Hathorne was very confident whenever he was talking about Paul Skeens he said he has some military background this guy is ready for anything and he looks like he's a major leaguer already why they're only tossing him those three innings I think is to maybe get his confidence up he's also a guy that is hitting those triple digits a quarter of his pitches whenever he's going out there. Do you really want him to be doing that for six innings down in Indy, or do you want to save him for his time up here in Pittsburgh? I'm not sure. I'm not the person who makes those calls, but what we're seeing from Paul Skeens in Indianapolis should get everybody revved up. Yeah, you hear old scouts talk about the mental makeup of a player, and Paul Skeens seems mm -hmm. to be one of those guys that fits that blueprint, that template perfectly, having the kind of background that he does. And I think that's one thing that definitely works in his favor. You mentioned, you know, being, you know, deliberate, maybe a little cautious with bringing him up. I was having a discussion with somebody earlier about a particular date that you might want to see him. And the one I floated out there, I want to test your theory on this. The one I floated okay. out was Memorial Day weekend. By the time you get to that point, Paul Skeens will have about six, maybe seven starts in AAA. And if he's doing this over his next four or five starts, then it's safe to say he might be ready. But more importantly, if the Pirates are able to do anything remotely close to what they did last April going into May, and let's say they split the month of May before they get to Memorial Day weekend, you're probably looking at 28, 29 wins, probably somewhere in the division race, and you have the Atlanta Braves coming to town Memorial Day weekend. How about that to test out Paul Skeens in the waters in MLB? This is where I always stay cautious, right? I was in the American Hockey League for three, three and a half years, and I saw this with goaltenders all the time, especially being in the Buffalo system. If you rushed up a goaltender too soon, then they got to the NHL, and then they kind of fumbled a little bit. Do I think that that's going to happen with Paul Skeens and the mm -hmm. background that he comes from? No. However, you don't want to rush him just because he has six or seven starts in Indy, and he might be flashing what's good. you got to look at the opponents he's going against. Is he going against hold on, a Baltimore Orioles system like the Norfolk Tide that just put up 29 hits the other night. Ooh. Is he going against a team that elite? I'm not sure. So you have to look at what he's going against and then just think about, hey, let's keep his confidence up and make sure that he is totally ready for this. I'm aiming closer to all-star break okay. if I'm bringing Paul Skeens up. I'm glad you brought up a Baltimore system, the Norfolk Tides, because yeah. we saw <laughs> What some of those guys who produce from the system turn out into, and we saw some of that today. A lot of those players from Baltimore right now are homegrown, and they're definitely paying off. 412-575-2600 is the number on the board, or excuse me, the number to reach us. We got Jim and Peters. Jim, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, Paul, Gary. Hey, Susie, I love you, man. I'm 72. I, was, I played ball, I started in 1960. Let me just tell you. Okay. Why they're holding down on skeins, because you have to work the arm up. If he starts pitching too much, to blow the arm out because he's not used to those amount of innings, okay? So I'm predicting the second week in June because then he's in the second year of free agency. Now, that Jones dude is a real dude. Yes. He throws it 100. <laughs> he throws it. He has a slider. Now, Skeens, the best young pitcher I've seen since 1960. I was eight years old pitching Little League. Now, I'm going to tell you something. 103 on the gun. And he has a slider that drops down to the floor. They have to build the arm strength up. They don't want to do it too much because they want to save it. Appreciate the call, Jim. I've heard some people, and Susie, I, I know I'm dating myself here because this is around the time when I was like a, a <laughs> youngster and, and knee high to a duck. But I've heard the name Roger Clemens brought up as far as best pitching prospects some people have seen in comparison to Paul Skeeds. They're saying they're the best they've seen since Roger Clemens. I can't, I can't speak going back to 1960, but I've heard plenty of people say he's the best pitching prospect they've seen since Roger Clemens. And I, I think it speaks to something else, too. He talked about Jared Jones, and then we talked about him earlier. But here's the, here's the part where it gets fun, and, and you hate to dream so much, and 
build up too much of an expectation. But you're talking about the possibility of a long term, you know, not long term, but necessarily over the next few years here of Paul mm -hmm. Skeens and Jared Jones at the top of your rotation and two guys that can hit triple digits on the gun. That's something that gets your mind working as far as just how far this team could go with these two guys at the top of the rotation. And that's a storyline that should actually come from this series, too. You see those two top prospects and Paul Skeens and Jared Jones, and you get excited about them. You can feel a buzz about the younger kids that are coming up in this pirate system. Well, you should look at Baltimore and see what they're building. I know I mentioned the 29 hits that they got on Wednesday against the Charlotte Knights, but they also put up 26 runs. Now, they have three to four to five of the top prospects in all of Major League Baseball mm -hmm. on their roster. But Baltimore was in the same position that the Pirates are kind of in now just a couple of years ago. You can't yep. you can't look at their 2021 season where they only put up 52 wins. They just had 110 last year, but the Pirates are building kind of exactly what Baltimore's system is building and you're seeing them reap the benefits of just trusting their farm system. I think that that's what we're going to be seeing with the Buccos here coming over the next maybe two, three years. But Jared Jones and Paul Skeens are a big part of that plan and a big part of that rotation that we're going to see here in the future. Yeah, it's it's I'm glad you brought up what Baltimore has done in the draft, because what you're seeing now in Baltimore is the product of what happens when you get high draft mm -hmm. picks and you hit on those high draft yes. picks. because we've seen enough times with this organization over the past couple of decades, what happens when you don't hit on those high draft picks. So this is where, you know, when you start to work that plan and you stay you stay diligent with that plan. Baltimore becomes the end game of what you see from a team that does it right. Matt and Butler, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey guys, just talking about the current. I'm a little worried about Jack Zawinski here because mm. from last year to this year, uh, both years he's shown he can't hit. I mean, he strikes out too many times. He's not getting on base at all. His average was very low last year. It's very low this year. McCutcheon looks like he's not a DH anymore. He looks like the game's passed him by. I know things could turn around a bit, but his power was dropping, and it looks like everything's dropping for him. So those are a worry, and I hope our catcher starts to hit. I like him as a player. I like him as a guy, but I hope he starts to hit a little too. Yeah, thanks for the call, Matt. I, Jack Sawinski, Susie, I'm going to bring up a name here that might make a couple people itchy. But when I look okay. at him at the plate now, it, in the circumstances that he succeeds in and the ones where he doesn't really succeed in, the name Pedro Alvarez comes to mind. When you see how oh, God, he dropped yeah. off, where he was a guy that could only seem to hit against right-handers when no one was on base with maybe two outs. And that was when he was really effective. Other than that, every other situation seemed to be a problem for him. But I, I get that feeling, Susie, where it's just, you know, you wonder how you can get Jack Sawinski into opp opportunities to succeed, and what are those opportunities? A Pedro Alvarez comparison also brings up the point of power. Pedro Alvarez was just a big power hitter. Whenever yeah. I think back to him in his days, you just think of the bombs that he hit over the right field wall at mm -hmm. PNC Park. Uh, Sawinski, I, you know, I don't know. You, you kind of have to wait on it. It's still early in the season. Coming into the regular season from spring training, a lot of these Pirates players were excited about the production that they were seeing at the plate. I mean, you saw the home run total, 46 home runs there's yep. power there they're generating hits so you just gotta kind of lay low it's just eight games into the season we'll see if Suwinski can kind of get out of the rut but you brought up the mental game earlier and that could also be a thing too if we saw Suwinski starting to trickle off at the end of last season that mental game could still be taking a toll going into this year as well yeah you brought up the power aspect of it they hit two home runs in this game it just so happens yeah they were two solo home runs they didn't have anybody else on base and there wasn't much hitting done with anybody on base because there weren't a lot of guys on base and O'Neill Cruz had three hits by himself of the team's six hits so that's something that continues to add up for you we will take a break when we come back we got to get in the penguins they're on a pretty hot run right now three wins in a row in their last four days and they keep this going tomorrow we'll find out when we come back